Well, right now, detectives are upstairs trying to sort out fact from fiction. They're not confirming anything that the suspect's best friend told us, but an organization called the National Association for Intelligence Officers says the, pre the suspect was the president of the Houston branch. A dramatic police chase through Houston ends with HPD shooting the driver of a brand new Jeep Commander. One of the officers saw on the passenger side saw the suspect reach down and make an, a, an obvious and overt movement underneath the seat. Uh, fearing for his safety, he fired the weapon one time. A second officer also fired, though it's not clear how many times the driver was shot. You see, Healthman says the suspect in the police chase was a national intelligence officer who spoke seven languages and often showed up at law enforcement fundraisers, though never allowed himself to be photographed. The Jeep he was driving is registered to something called the National Security Command Center. He definitely was a CIA agent. Randall Callanan represents Carnaby's wife. If the case makes it to trial, he plans to call Secret Service agents, FBI agents, even former President George H.W. Bush. In court documents, Callanan writes, quote, President Bush, former CIA director, is expected to testify regarding his prior associations and personal acquaintance with Mr. Carnaby and regarding Mr. Carnaby's involvement in uncovering two assassination plots against President Bush. A spokesman for the former president did not know enough about the case to comment, but Callanan says the testimony will prove Carnaby first fled from police because he had confidential CIA information in his car. And of course, he knew he was doing nothing wrong. So at that point, he knew it was an unlawful arrest. The facts show it was an unlawful arrest. And since he is in the CIA, he needs to uh, protect his information and his sources, and he fled. Police found three weapons in the Jeep. They say one was within reach of the suspect when officers shot him. Police found three weapons in the Jeep. They say one was within reach of the suspect when officers shot him. Combined, the officers who shot the suspect have nearly 40 years, 40 years, 40 years. of experience. HPD's internal affairs and homicide divisions are investigating along with the Harris County District Attorney's Office. And now remember, James Brown, stepson, was a big dude. So when he said that he knew this, he was going to expose it. When he was coming home one night, they shot him up like a dog. But he had enough strength to get back in his car to drive to the hospital. He died in the parking lot of the hospital. And what did they do to James Brown's son? They put four grand in his pocket. Because four represent ritual indeed, with the elites letting them know the hit has been done. Do y'all understand what's going on here? Combined, the officers who shot the suspect have nearly 40 years of experience. HPD's internal affairs and homicide divisions are investigating along with the Harris County District Attorney's Office. We're live near downtown tonight. I'm Sally McDonald, Fox 26 News. He drove fast cars in the movies, and tonight he died in one. Actor Paul Walker of the Fast and Furious franchise killed in a car crash, and he was just 40 years old.
He drove fast cars in the movies, and tonight he died in one. Actor Paul Walker of the Fast and Furious franchise killed in a car crash, and he was just 40 years old. And we have breaking news now. The son of former New Jersey Governor John Corzine has died. Jeffrey Corzine, seen here with his sister back in 2007, was 31 years old. At this point, the Corzine family is not saying where or when or how he died. Jeffrey Corzine was the youngest of the Corzine's three children. She was the acid-tongued queen of comedy, famed for her acerbic wit. Joan Rivers was a multifaceted performer, an actress, author, commentator and director, but best known for her stand-up. You're talking to a lady over here! Her observations were merciless and her comic timing perfect. She was unafraid to be cruel and proud to be honest. All my life I've always said what I thought. And... Uh, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble. Miss Rivers, how are you? You made you made a ton of news right. officiating the wedding in New York yesterday. Is this like a is this like a new uh, cottage uh, career move I for you? I'm so excited. Okay. And I should do very well because I don't charge. And do you think that the country will see the first the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle uh, is a tramp. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. It's okay. Rivers died this afternoon. surrounded by family and friends at Mount Sinai Hospital. She was rushed there last Thursday, last Thursday. Rivers died this afternoon, surrounded by family and friends at Mount Sinai Hospital. She was rushed there last Thursday after going into cardiac arrest. Her throat. We have live team coverage for you. From her last moments to how she's being remembered, let's start with CBS 2's Dave Carlin, live outside Mount Sinai. Dave? Maurice and Christine, we have some poignant details about Joan Rivers' final hours. She was in a private room on the 11th floor, and to make it more comfortable for her, her own decorator was allowed to come in and make it cozy and, and actually make the room more homey. We also understand that her family, of course, was there, but also her beloved dogs were allowed to be up there with her. I'm shocked she's dead. Joan Rivers' death was announced in this statement by daughter Melissa. She passed peacefully at 1.17 p.m. At 1.17 p.m. She was in a private room on the 11th floor. Joan Rivers was a brilliant, brilliant comedian. Um, I loved her staunch support of Israel. Melissa Rivers ended her statement. There was unanimity over the last two days that ISIL poses a significant threat to NATO members. Prince Charles hosted a Welcome to the World of Wales reception at the venue of the NATO summit in Newport on Thursday. The event at the Celtic Manor Resort Hotel 
was organized to promote Wales and to thank the local community for welcoming the NATO leaders and world media. Among the leaders greeted by Prince Charles were German Chancellor Angela Merkel and US President Barack Obama. The leaders are meeting for a two-day summit. The parents of those children must uh, just think about you every day. So nice to see you, sir. And, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> 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 The, uh, you can see the extraordinary beauty, the wonderful people, the great hospitality. Uh, so I'd encourage everybody in the States to come visit Wales. Everybody does the same. But we're going to turn now to the breaking news involving a deadly carjacking less than a week ago. A $40,000 reward was offered for the killers who shot a man outside shopping with his wife at a mall in New Jersey. WABC-TV's Matt Kozar has the latest. Matt. Bianca, this morning prosecutors will be briefing the media on these four suspects who were taken into custody. Authorities launched a massive search for the killers. There was even a significant reward for information leading to an arrest. Now, 30-year-old Dustin Friedland was shot and killed at the Short Hills Mall parking garage last Sunday right here in New Jersey. He was with his wife and they had just finished holiday shopping. They had returned to their Range Rover when they were carjacked. Freeland was shot in the head during a scuffle and the two carjackers fled in the SUV. The Range Rover was found behind an abandoned house in Newark the next day. Sources also say the Suburban was seen before the shooting roaming the mall property. Sources also say the Suburban was seen before the shooting roaming the mall property. Before the um, police came, I just heard like a car like zooming out of the parking lot because it's echoes, like you hear everything. I just heard like, swir like swerving. Just more than two hours earlier that same evening in nearby South Orange, the owner of a 2014 Land Rover was carjacked right outside his home. Police say three masked men armed with guns robbed the SUV's owner but didn't harm him, didn't harm him. Hours earlier that same evening in nearby South Orange, the owner of a 2014 Land Rover was carjacked right outside his home. Police say three masked men armed with guns robbed the SUV's owner but didn't harm him. Police are looking into the possibility the incidents are connected. Dustin Friedland was a lawyer, as is his wife. The couple married two years ago and had just bought and moved into an apartment in this building in Hoboken. Those who knew and worked with Friedland are stunned and saddened. A carjacking less than a week ago. A $40,000 reward was offered for the killers who shot a man outside shopping with his wife at a mall in New Jersey. This morning in the investigation into the death of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. Vanita Nair is, is here with how police made several arrests in a raid last night. Vanita, good morning. Good morning. Officers recovered bags of heroin and arrested four people overnight, all of whom had possession charges in the past. The NYPD told us it is investigating whether there is any connection between the four people and the drugs found at Hoffman's apartment. In Brooklyn, New York, it's a horrible crime. Two grade school children stabbed in an elevator in their apartment complex, and this six-year-old boy is killed. Now, this boy happens to be the cousin of Chicago Bulls power forward Taj Gibson. And in an emotional post on Twitter, Gibson wrote, They killed my little Superman, R.I.P.P.J., only two more weeks until your seventh birthday, 
tears forever. PJ and his best friend, seven-year-old Michaela Capers, were playing outside Sunday night, went upstairs to get a snack, but were met by a man who police say cornered them in the tiny elevator and stabbed each child repeatedly. PJ stumbled off at the fourth floor, fourth floor, fourth floor floor fingerprint dust now covers the place he took his last breath hundreds gathered at the boys funeral on friday morning including mayor de blasio but de blasio who calls sharpton family is sticking by his buddy doesn't change the relationship one bit i'm very proud to be his friend um i think he has done a lot of good for the city of new york and for this country I have the exact same positive view of him I had before. Dove dove nacque la la bis bis nona. Incredibile, è molto importante, è un 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 senso di clarity. Chiarezza. Chiarezza. Friday morning, including Mayor de Blasio, other elected officials, and the head coach of the Chicago Bulls, seen here on the left. PJ's cousin is Bulls forward Taj Gibson. It's going to be real hard just having that young face running around the barbecues, always saying, pick me up. PJ was stabbed to death Sunday in an elevator at the Boulevard Houses in East New York. We're going to turn on tonight's top story. An angry crowd waiting for a child murder suspect tonight. Daniel St. Hubert charged with the murder of six-year-old PJ Avito and the attempted murder of a seven-year-old girl. Right now, he's at the courthouse. That's where Abu News reporter Josh Einiger is in downtown Brooklyn with new information. Josh. And Liz, just in the past half hour, I was in the courtroom as Daniel St. Hubert appeared before a judge for the first time. Let's show you video from that arraignment as prosecutors read the charges, calling them vicious and heinous, these crimes. And you can actually see St. Hubert briefly and imperceptibly shake his head as if to say no as the prosecutor laid out this case. We learned new details, including how eyewitnesses watched St. Hubert enter the building at the Boulevard houses along with these two kids. And a few minutes later, he ran out, falling on his way, then picked himself up and kept running. And at the very spot where he had fallen, Prosecutors say that's where police found the bloody knife and on the handle of that knife, DNA that matched the violent career criminal. Tonight, Daniel St. Hubert emerged from a police precinct into the glare of camera lights and the screams of hecklers. And for the briefest of moments, he appeared to wink. For the briefest of moments, he appeared to wink.